Antares uh, is the uh, spiritual name of uh, Louis Spiegel, who, who was a student teacher at the time that I arrived in El Cajon. His uh, name was Charles Spiegel, but that's not really his real name. He came to Unarius uh, probably in the early 60s, if not 59 or 58. By 1963s, part of their uh, reincarnation stories. I had a, you might say, a rapport with him, I, a feeling that I had known him before. When I met Antares, he right away looked at me and said, I know you from Atlantis. You were a student of in a temple of Uriel, and you um, have been studying this. I felt like I'd met an old friend because there was an instant um, feeling of, I, I've known you before. When I first came here, I thought he was the most egotistical jackass I'd ever seen. You know, that was my own personal opinion. And I'm sure he had one of me too, because I was arrogant at the time too. I hadn't worked out any past either. He uh, was very instrumental in helping me also. Uh, he himself had some problems and he was working them out. And Terry's eventually became what is commonly called in our vernacular, in our uh, myth on our planet as Lucifer or the fallen angel. He was just obnoxious. He, he would say things that just make your blood turn cold and you want to go up and sock him one. In Christian mythology, Lucifer was known as one who was um, kicked out of heaven because of his ego and because he thought he knew better than God, quote unquote. In the understandings that Unarius teaches is that Lucifer uh, was not kicked out of these higher dimensions. His consciousness, his um, vibration, if you want to call it that, his frequency, uh, he lowered his frequency because he became egotistical. So essentially, nobody threw him out, he threw himself out. When he first came here to El Cajon, back in the early 70s, 73, I think it was, he was uh, driving with Uriel. They had gone for a drive in the country or something like that. And while they were driving, she looked at him and she says, I know who you are. It hadn't come out yet that he was the fallen angel. And uh, so he just quietly took that in. Finally, he said to her, this is really very funny. He says, Archangel and Archdemon traveling together, <laughs> which was kind of cute. That, he, that meant he had come to grips with that information. He was like an Archdemon and she was an Archangel. And so a, quite a contrast there. Well. She had come back to liberate him, but she also had come back to liberate uh, the rest of us who were influenced uh, negatively uh, by him and, and other uh, individuals such as myself. Uh, all of us have uh, fallen at one time or another. So when Lucifer incarnated on this, on this world, he did not obviously, you know, as a baby, come out of the womb and say, hi, I'm Lucifer. <laughs> And um, he actually took on many different names throughout many civilizations or, or many, many lifetimes. If you follow the plots of all the uh, various stories of how they traveled from planet to planet and from civilization to civilization by reincarnation, he is the one that's leading the dark forces against Ruth Norman and Ernest Norman. He incarnated into the lower physical worlds again onto a series of uh, planets in the Orion solar system. The Emperor in the Star Wars series of films is a psychic remembrance of that particular leader, Tyrantus. Flash Gordon serials from the 1930s, uh, he was that evil Fu Manchu character. You have a short time, Doctor, to decide whether or not you will help me in my conquest of the universe or meet such an amusing death which I may devise. And he leads the others astray. Take them away. He was the one that really started the whole um, negation going. 